The NDAA is finally making the news, but not yet for its overbearing domestic security provisions. Yesterday, President Obama signed an executive order imposing stricter sanctions on Iran. These sanctions were provided in Section 1245 of the National Defense Authorization Act. Sound familiar? That's the bill with the extremely controversial provision, cementing indefinite detention for any American that the government believes may have ties to terrorism. Side note, nobody really knows what terrorism means exactly. The debate on its definition is still ongoing, which means the government can use it however it wants for now. For a while now, the U.S. and its allies have been asking Iran to please promise that they aren't making nuclear weapons with their nuclear energy facilities. Of course, we can still make them. Better safe than sorry. 1995 was the first year that the United States imposed sanctions on Iran, deciding that any of their financial transactions that came through to the U.S. would be rejected. But they found ways around. Seventeen years have passed, and Iran has not budged. But thanks to the NDAA, the president can impose even stricter sanctions. Here's what Section 1245 says, basically. Imposition of sanctions with respect to the financial sector of Iran. In November, the Secretary of the Treasury called Iran a land of money launderers who finance terrorism and put the global economy at risk. Despite the sanctions, Iranian banks have found ways to hide their identities and sneak into financial transactions with the U.S. Instead of just refusing to do business with them, we're going to freeze their assets and hold on to anything that they might have left in our country. We have 60 days to do this from the day this bill is signed. We're going to start rejecting transactions that the president decides might be undercover Iranians trying to worm their way in. Oh, just a reminder, we're still under that 1995 sanction. Okay, so we can't prohibit all transactions with Iran. Food, medical supplies, and medicine are all okay. After 180 days, feel free to use this act to prohibit any kind of transactions with any country that's getting a little bit too friendly with Iran's petroleum reserves. Every 60 days after this act passes, the Energy and Treasury Departments have to submit a report to Congress with the price and availability of oil from all the countries other than Iran. 90 days after the act passes, and every 180 days after that, the President will decide, based on the reports, if we can stop buying oil from Iran or from countries that get their oil from Iran. The president is required to diplomatically convince other countries to try and stop buying oil from Iran, too. Basically, it's a global-scale government boycott. Expect oil to be even harder to come by and Saudi Arabia to continue being our very best friend.